So many people forget the optimization process that you learn in calculus. <laughs> that uh, I don't know. It's uh, somewhat baffling to me, mainly because for me, uh, when I learned the calculus, that was one of the like amazing things. It's uh, one of those things where before calculus, you were told, hey, you, we don't have tools to do it. Uh, you need a calculus to do it. And you finally learn how to do it in calculus. So, so, so in my case, I would never forget it. Um, but I, I have seen a lot of students do forget it. So let me use this as a demonstration for the optimization process or optimization. It's too grandiose to call it algorithm, but um, what steps to go through when you are asked to have to optimize or minimize or maximize or extremize something or optimize something. So in this question, you are given the form of a potential energy function, uh, which I guess, okay, <laughs> good. Um, it, it, I think these come from things like van der Waals force and dipole force, but you don't need to know any of that. <laughs> you are given the potential energy function, so you can start from there. Um, and then it asks, so at what distance of separation does the potential energy have a local minimum? And um, this is, I think, one of those things where it's uh, good to have a good physical picture. And you can actually plot something like this. Um, Wolfram Alpha actually does that. You can plot. Uh, it can't handle symbolic values like a and b. So let me just use 1 over x squared minus 1 over x to the third power. This will give you some plot that um, gives you some idea of what the function looks like. So, um, so I guess uh, let me plot this from uh, from um, x equals one point one to x equals two point zero. So this is what the plot of it kind of looks like, and you do see that there's a point where you have a minimum potential energy, and then it goes up again. So that's what the question is referring to when it asks. At what distance of separation does the potential energy have a local minimum? Not, yeah, not that x equals infinity. Yeah, and that's also not a minimum because uh, there's uh, values of x where it'll be uh, where it'll be less. So, so as you look at this graph, uh, the graph can also serve you as a reminder of what the optimization process involves. So when you look at the local minimum. That's where the slope of the graph is zero, because at the minimum, the graph is neither decreasing nor increasing. It's that in-between point. And the same reasoning process applies to maximum as well. And you know, in calculus, you learn the second derivative test for figuring out, are you dealing with the minimum or maximum? I'll just tell you, in physics, a lot of times we intuitively know <laughs> if we are dealing with the minimum or maximum. So we only do the first derivative thing to um, to figure out where the extremum is, and we let our intuition guide whether it's minimum or maximum. So here, uh, what we have to do is we have to find the place where the derivative of the potential energy function is at zero, so that the slope of the potential energy function is flat. So uh, that's uh, what I'm going to set up. I'm going to say I'm going to take derivative of u with respect to x, uh, this is partial derivative in our context. It kind of means the same thing as regular derivative. Um, so when I take the derivative, I get, uh, so that's going to be minus 6 times a over x to the seventh power. I'm using the power rule. And I get a factor of minus 3, so it becomes plus 3 times b over x to the power of 4. And you say this is the derivative should be equal to zero where my x is at minimum. And you solve. It's actually a lot simpler than one might think looking at these really large powers. Because when you look at this, right hand, right hand side being zero, uh, you can multiply the whole thing by, let's say, x to the uh, seventh power. I'm looking at the highest power in the denominator so that um, I basically get rid of all the fractions. Then right hand side, nothing changes. On the left hand side, I have minus six times a 
over x to the seventh power that gets cancelled out. So I have minus 6a and then, oh wait, I have second term, plus 3, and then I have x to the fourth on the denominator, cancel out four factors, so I have three factors left, so it's going to be 3b to the uh, times x to the third power is equal to 0, because the right-hand side is still 0. And so you have only one term that depends on x, so it picked, it's easy enough to solve for that, and then... Um, and, and then take the cube root to get x. So, um, so I'm just going to spell out the process of, of operation I'll go through. I'll first add 6a to both sides, and then I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, 1 over 3b. Um, and then, so having done that, I'll get x to the third power is uh, 6a over 3b, 6a, you know, on the right hand side here, six, uh, so 6a divided by 3b, um, so 2a over b, to get x, I need to take the cube root, so that will give me value of x, and, um, oh, yeah, they're not giving me numbers, so I guess I just need to type this in, um, it's probably easiest to, to type in as, uh, so 2a over b, and then um, raised to the power of one half, one third. Because uh, I think there, I guess there's the nth root there, but uh, this is also identical um, in terms of that. And part B is uh, it's super easy to answer. Um, how do you how do you put it? Um, uh, I guess one of the ways to get at it, which is a bit abstract, but uh, we did talk about it in lecture, uh, when we talked about the potential energy, uh, especially ahead of driving the potential energy for spring uh, force, uh, we said that potential, um, there's a relationship between potential energy and conservative force, as in change in potential energy is minus of the work done by the conservative force. Um, so change in potential energy from A to B is integral of this work done by conservative force, A to B, minus the size, so that when conservative force does negative work, you get positive change in potential energy. And the flip side of this relationship is this. You can express the conservative force as some calculus operation of a potential energy. So the flip side of this relationship is that conservative force as a function of x or whatever is minus of the partial derivative with respect to x of the potential energy as a function of x. So if you have a somehow constant potential energy, then your force is zero. I guess your potential energy is not changing. Um, and if you have some other function of a position, then taking derivative of that will give you the force. Uh, here, so I bring up this uh, somewhat abstract and conceptual piece, which I did lecture on, so I feel a little bit justified to bring it in. Because this is one of those situations where if you have a good conceptual grounding, you can get the answer really quickly without doing any calculation. We basically got the the separation where the potential energy is the minimum by setting the derivative equal to zero. So force at that position is, of course, going to be zero. That's the condition that we thought. Um, and there's a deeper uh, conceptual thing here, which is that um, I think I'm going to bring this in when we do oscillations later in the semester. Um, so this is an uh, equilibrium position. So what you will find the uh, equilibrium position of something like a spring force is that that's the position where your potential energy is at a minimum. Um, in fact, the derivation I did uh, on Friday uh, showing the equivalence of the quote-unquote spring for spring potential energy and the combined potential energy of gravity and spring force uh, that that's kind. That's an example of that. At, when you treat the 
because both gravity and spring force are conservative, when you treat them as one force and um, and you kind of describe the potential energy of the combined force, you are naturally going to find the minimum of that combined potential energy where your when where you have the new equilibrium because it's at equilibrium position. Uh, when when you're dealing with the restoring forces, at equilibrium position is where you will have minimum potential energy and zero net force. So, yeah, I really wanted to do this question, so did that. 